The story of the downfall of the Kalradic Empire is a tragedy filled with greed and paranoia. The decay accelerated in the summer of 1084 when General Garius started an arms race that could not be stopped until it was too late. In this fateful summer, the Western Empire hired previously unknown mercenary band that would quickly use its influence to increase military spending dramatically in this corner of the empire. The level of expenditure would quickly prove to be unsustainable, but not before it could do unrepairable damage. Hello everybody, I hope you're having a great day. In this video I'd like to talk a bit about how the AI economy works, how do the AI kingdoms and clans get their money. So recently with the infinite influence glitch and people using mercenaries to draw absurd amount of money from kingdoms, a lot of people have noticed that the AI will actually run out of money. And that was kind of surprising, since the AI is clearly cheating somehow, but they are actually fairly honest. The AI kingdoms will use money on their troops, they pay tributes, and they pay their mercenaries. But there is one source of income for the AI clans that is hidden from the player. And to illustrate this, I will be using my Encyclopedia Extender mod. So if I look at the kingdom pages here, you can see this kingdom bank here which is an account shared by all the clans in the kingdom. And all the AI kingdoms start with kingdom bank of 2 million. And this account is something that the AI clans can use to balance their economy. So the poor clans will withdraw money from here, and the rich clans will insert it, and the money is no strings attached. So it is kind of a social security net for the AI. There is also some amount of money that is generated from thin air to this account, and it will be more if the account is almost empty. So they do cheat some money, but it's not that much. And this other number is just the sum of the cash of each of the clans, minus their debts to the kingdom. But most importantly, while this 2 million is a lot of money, it is a finite amount of money. So with a sufficiently large mercenary contract, it's actually fairly easy to bankrupt the kingdom. So let me just show that. So I will join Batania as mercenary. My sword is yours for the right sum. And then let's cheat some influence. Now I have to wait a couple of days until the payments tick. So now they have paid me a couple million in mercenary payments. The clan wealth went to negative, meaning that they are heavily in debt. And they have started to slowly withdraw money from the kingdom bank. But there is a limit to how much they can withdraw per day. So it will take a long time until they have emptied this bank. Eventually they will do it because they are so deep in debt. So if we look at one of these, they are out of cash and they are over 500,000 in debt. And let's look at another one. So Fen Eingal here is only 50,000 in debt, so it's an order of magnitude less debt. And this is because they own only a castle, so the mercenary payments are not divided evenly, but the clans with more thieves have to pay more. So these small clans are not nearly as deep in debt. So as a player, your own clan will never deposit nor withdraw from this kingdom bank. But if you are leading a faction or make your own kingdom, your vassals will still use the kingdom bank. So after this interlude, let's look at what happens with your own kingdom and the economy as a whole over time. Seeing this massive increase in military spending, the rivaling northern and southern factions would not stay idle. They decided to hire the same mercenaries to orchestrate their counter-offensive at any cost necessary. But the officials of the empire were fooled. In reality, these mercenaries weren't much more than glorified prison guards. Soon all clans around the empire were struggling to pay the costs of these mercenaries, many falling deep into debt. Eventually, even the bedrock of the empire, their legions, were jeopardized. Pay stopped coming, and the ranks were plagued by deserters and mutiny. Even the mighty Garius was struggling to keep his troops under control, losing more men by the day. In the end, he would be left with only his most loyal bodyguards, and oftentimes even they would go hungry. Garios would have no option but to retreat to Zeonica in shame. There he would find that even the city's garrison was dispersing. Broken and defeated, before the first battle, he could only wait. So now I created my own kingdom here, and we can see one important distinction between your own kingdom and the AI kingdoms. You can see that the player kingdom bank starts at zero, and the sum of clan wealth is zero because I made it so that it doesn't count players' money, and I don't have any vessels. So now, the next thing I want to see is how the AI manages to balance their budgets long term, 
So are the AI kingdoms just burning money or can they actually keep their economy quite balanced? So let me just simulate this game far into the future and we can see how much money the AI has left and also how much money my kingdom bank will accumulate over time. Since we don't have anyone withdrawing from this account, this number should only go up. So here we are 5 years into the future in year 1089 and unsurprisingly Batania has lost a lot of land because I took all their money through my mercenary contract. Let's see how much kingdom bank I have. So in just 5 years my bank is up to a million, which I think is pretty good considering that we started from zero. And for Batania, all their clans have managed to withdraw everything from the bank and apparently many of them are still in debt. And around half the debt is with the leading clan. But let's look at the other kingdoms now. Remember that each of these started at 2 million. Azerai has used half of their bank. Kusites have used even more. Northern Empire still has all their money. As the Southern Empire. Turgia has used some. Landia has used a lot more. And Western Empire is still pretty healthy. So let me do another 5 years and let's see how the kingdoms are doing then. And we are back. So now we are in total 10 years to the future. My kingdom bank is up to 1.5 million, so the speed of increase is roughly half of what it was during the first 5 years, when we gained million. My vassals will be able to use this, so it's nice to have. Azarai is at 800,000. Batania is actually starting to gain some, although they are still in debt. Kusites are out of money. Northern Empire is still doing pretty good. As is Southern Empire. Turgia 1.2 million, Vlandia 800,000, Western Empire is actually above 2 million. Let's actually look at Kusites and see what they are doing. Their clan wealth is also abysmal. Poor, 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 very poor. So it looks like their kingdom is still intact and they haven't lost too much, but I guess they would start losing soon, or at least it would not be hard to break their economy at this point. So all in all, the AI seems to be running their kingdoms fairly well, but apparently they can also sometimes run out of money, even without the, any direct player actions. The old enemies of the Empire smelled blood in the water and launched devastating attacks. In both east and west, city after city would fall, without end in sight. Eventually, many of the nobles would defect, leaving even more chaos behind. Most of the traders were bought by the rich king of Azarai, who promised them debt cancellation and land in the conquered ruins of the empire. By the year 1092, less than 10 years after the inciting incident, the destruction of the empire was complete. Their economy ruined and the lands conquered. All that was remaining of the old empire were the treacherous noble families and small loyalist insurgencies. One has to wonder why the empire loyalists decided to honor their debts and kept using the old imperial denar as their currency amidst total economic collapse. One of the few remaining imperial texts from this period highlights the psychological and cultural importance of the denar. Si denarium credere nequeo, quae mi spesest? If I can't trust the dinar, what is my hope? The last topic I want to cover is how the kingdom wealth affects noble defections and recruitment. So if we look at Batania here, they are still really poor as a kingdom. And if I look at one of the clan pages, you can see that there is this share of kingdom wealth field, which you can think of as how much this clan thinks they can take from the kingdom bank. Then you have this nominal total wealth, which is just some of their cash and debt and share of kingdom wealth. And importantly, for recruitment, the clan also considers this share of kingdom wealth. So what this means is that clans are less likely to defect from rich kingdoms, since they think they are rich because they can withdraw a lot of money from the kingdom pool. But in this example, because Batania is so poor, now this clan are really likely to defect. And if we look at Batania as a whole, they have actually lost all but three of their original clans and these two are actually rebels that they have managed to somehow recruit. So now let me try to recruit this really poor clan and let's see how much they want. So first let me declare war. Okay. So let's see how much they want. So they want 600,000 which is not that cheap but it's not bad either considering that they have city. And let's try this one next. They are really poor with no fiefs. I'm actually kind of surprised that they haven't defected already. 
and this clan we can recruit for just 86,000. So you can see how it's fairly easy to recruit lords from poor kingdoms. If I go back to the beginning of the campaign, so now I'm back in the year 1084, and all the AI kingdoms have the 2 million that they have in the beginning. So if we look at one of these clans, they get 80,000 as share of kingdom wealth, which makes their nominal total wealth healthy. So this clan would be kind of hard to recruit. So this is sort of the normal situation where recruitment is kind of hard. But if you think about it, my kingdom starts with zero in the bank. So if I now make vassal clan, let's promote this gal. Now, their wealth is very low because I don't have any kingdom wealth. So this clan will actually be kind of easy for other kingdoms to recruit. What you should do is to give them some cash to bump their total wealth. Something between 50 and 100,000 should suffice. So I can just talk to their leader and give her some money. So this is kind of interesting because the cash wealth of the clan is not nearly as important for recruitment when your kingdom actually has some money in the bank. But when you start your own kingdom, you don't have any bank, so your nobles are kind of likely to defect in the beginning. And also, if you train a kingdom with the mercenary glitch, then their clans will be more likely to defect as well. But that's all for now. I hope you learned something about the AI economy in Bannerlord. And as always, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.